is Erev Yontif. Tonight is called Yutas Kislev, the Yontov of the redemption of the Alter Rebbe, the first Lubavitcher Rebbe, in the year 1787. As you know, he was in prison, unfortunately, because there were many Jews, that religious, observant, righteous Jews, that were very upset of his way of teaching godliness to the world and to the Jewish people and they felt that it was wrong and they got the czar to, uh, to hold him as a criminal that he gave money to the Turkish government even though he gave money to the poor families in Israel which was under the Ottoman power so he was in jail for 53 days but he was treated as a criminal and a rebellious so they put him in very harsh conditions and the first two days he didn't eat because he had a, a hunger strike because he couldn't, he, he wanted only kosher food <coughs> and they tried to force food in his mouth they had four general uh, uh, soldiers trying to open the mouth they couldn't he was so uh, adamant not to put in his mouth God forbid non-kosher food finally at the third day they said to him one of the ministers said if I get you kosher food from a Jew, a religious Jew that lives in St. Petersburg would you eat? he says 100% and he said, only from the Jew Mordechai. Mordechai was one of the Chabad Hasidim that lived in St. Petersburg. So the minister came to the Mordechai. He says, I have a Jew in prison that would only eat kosher. Could you prepare food? So he says, no problem. He didn't know who this Jew was. And then every time when he prepared him food, they used to give messages in the food. You know, like on the bottom of the plate, deliver messages. So the first message out to Rebbe wrote, Shema Yisrael. Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. So when they got the portion back, the empty plate, they told the Hasidim that the Rebbe is still alive because they read Shema Yisrael. And then they started to write back and it was a communication. But the point is, when he was sitting in prison, he used to say the Tehillim, not only the way it's divided for the month, 30 days, you know, every day of the month you say like a few more chapters, so you finish it once a month. He used to call it the weekly Tehillim. The weekly Tehillim is divided by the day of the week. So Sunday you say the first 30 chapters. Monday you say the second 30 chapters. So by the end of the week you finish the whole 150 chapters. So he writes an interesting thing when he was reading Tehillim and said these words, Fada b'shalom nafshi mikravli kibrab maimani, which is the Tuesday Tehillim, the Tuesday, the 30 chapters of Tuesday, when he said that verse, before he started the next verse, they came to tell him he's free. The mm -hmm. 53rd day. It was on a Tuesday. Hadab B'Shalom is chapter 55 in Tillam, plus 19, on the 19th of Kislev. And he said these words, what is this speaking about? When David HaMelech was fighting Shalom, his son was in war with David, so what happened was the Talmud says that the, the Avshalom's people were praying to God that David wins the war. So Avshalom's uh, army, they were praying to God that David should win, not Avshalom. So what does that mean? The highest level of redemption is not only that you're redeemed from a situation, but that the enemy itself is praying for your victory. So the Alter Rebbe, when he said, as soon as he finished that verse, they told him, you're free. Why? Because the people, the Jews that put him in jail, the Misnagdim, eventually they became the friends of the Hasidim and they became big, bigger Hasidim than the Hasidim itself. So that's the ultimate redemption, Bishalom. That not only you fight a war and you win someone, you win a war, so you win the war, you lose the battle. The guy hates you. The guy doesn't want to look at you. So you won the war, but you lost the battle. That's not a, that's not a complete redemption. A complete redemption is that you can get that the team that you're fighting realizes that you're right. And not only realizes you're right, agrees with you. Not only agrees with you, but wants it and becomes your friend and works with you to do the right thing. That's the ultimate redemption. That's what we deal with every day with our animal soul.
There's one way is, okay, I, I ignore my animal so I don't listen to it, and I say, listen, I don't care. The second thing is, no, I get my animal to want to learn Torah. I tell an animal, it's good to learn. It's good to put on Tevilim that the animal so should want to put on to. That the animal so should want to learn Torah. That's ultimate peace, because then you're not fighting it and putting it down, you're getting it to become your friend. That's what's going to happen when Mashiach comes. When Mashiach comes, we're not going to fight the Arabs. No. The Arabs themselves are going to go out of Israel voluntarily and say, I'm sorry. We forgive, please forgive us for all the murders and the killings that we did. Israel belongs to you. It is yours to begin with. And go build the base of Migdash on, on the mountain and they're going to take off the mosque themselves and take it apart within one day willingly and happily. That's the ultimate redemption with the coming of Mashiach Amen.